Hey everyone, this is Carmen Hernandez at the National Weather Service in Shreveport and I'm a Pathway student here and today we're starting a new thing called Science Saturday which we're going to do pretty much every Saturday except the July 4th weekend where we're going to come to you about various weather topics. And to kick off today we're going to talk about the summer solstice. The summer solstice is today and this is the day wherever we're having about 14 hours of daylight here in our CWA. And so to begin with, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the seasons and how they work. And basically the earth has a tilt of 23.5 degrees and it stays tilted as it rotates on its axis and then orbits the sun throughout the year. And in December we have we have the summer south of the equator and winter north of the equator. And then in June, like today, we have winter south of the equator and summer north of the equator. And then we have equinoxes in March and September where we get roughly the same amount of night and day on these two equinoxes. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the difference between an equinox and a solstice. So an equinox is the sun's rays are hitting are overhead the equator directly and it causes there to be equal amounts of day and night and this happens in March and September. Uh, in March it causes there to be spring in the northern hemisphere and fall in the southern hemisphere and then in September it is fall in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere. And then you have the solstice, which happens in December and June. And the summer solstice in June is when the sun's rays are hitting the Tropic of Cap Cancer, which is an imaginary line that's parallel to the equator at about 23.5 degrees north. You have the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23.5 degrees south, which is also parallel to the equator. And when it hits the Tropic of Cancer, it gives you the longest days of the year for the northern hemisphere, well parts of the northern hemisphere, and then towards the southern hemisphere you get some of the shortest days. But then in December you get the shortest days the further you go to the North Pole and then longer days the closer you get to the South Pole. So today is the summer solstice where we get about 14 hours of sunlight throughout the day. And as you go closer to the North Pole, you get more sunlight. So uh, in Alaska and then towards the Arctic Circle, they actually have 24 hours of daylight today. And then you have the South Pole, wherever they have 24 hours of night today. And then whenever you get closer to the Tropic of Cancer and around our area, you get about 14 hours of sunlight throughout the day. And it's le days leading up to this and days leading and going away from this day that you get the longest days of the year. And so you may wonder, well, if it's the most amount of sunlight on this one day, then why do we not have the hottest temperatures for this day? But this is due to the land water heating differences. And so land, it has a lower specific heat, which it's able to as the sun's rays come through the atmosphere, it's able to take some of the, absorb some of the energy from the sun, but it also reflects back as some of it as well. And there's also no mixing between the layers on the land, but in the water, the, there is a lot of reflection and a lot of the sun's energy actually gets transmitted back to, back into the atmosphere. So it absorbs less sun less sun energy and then there's an ability for there's also mixing that goes into with the ocean so it takes even longer for the ocean to heat up than it is the land so like this graph here it shows that the length of the day actually as it goes down the the hottest time of the year actually doesn't happen until around july for certain parts like here in albuquerque or in albuquerque so the solstice is around June and then that's when the longest day of the year is, but it's going down in July, but you get uh, 
hotter temperatures in July, which is also, that's the reason that you see more hurricanes, and that's why September is peak hurricane season, because it takes the water even in the oceans even longer to heat up than it does. So while the average temperature, like air temperature, it's July is when it's its highest, it's closer to August, September, whenever the oceans have its warmest temperatures, which is fuel for the hurricanes and why we get the, why that's considered the peak hurricane season. Just a little bit about the summer solstice around the world. And here's a little video. It, this is in Alaska, actually. And basically it's just showing how in Alaska they have sunlight all day. And around this time of year, they're having the longest amount of days and for about 70 days they have what is they have enough sunlight to be able to see things and just see various objects around them so that is why they do that and um actually during this time of year they even have a baseball game that they play from about 10:30 p.m. to about 1:30 a.m. So they call it, and they also call this region the Midnight Sun. In the South Pole though, they're experiencing 24 hours of night, so they're not gonna, they haven't been seeing the sun for a little bit. But whenever it gets to de December, the poles will, the, Alaska will have nighttime, while the, towards the South Pole will have 24 hours of daylight. And so, Today we're gonna create a sundial with this and so I wanted to just give you a little history about sundials and basically before there were clocks people were relying on the passage of the sun to tell what time of day it was and they used a gnomon which is the pillar or stick of some kind and that was used to it's sh the shadow it cast onto the dial it could tell you the different times of day and for this one, it's telling you that it is 2 p.m. And so, for today's activity, just wanted to show you how we could make a sundial. So, we're just going to start out with a paper plate like this. Uh, if you have one, if not, you can just take a piece of cardboard and cut a circle around it. And, um, basically, which I'll just have to do is you take a marker and you do 12 here well here and then you can do six at the bottom and then you just make it like a cloud I mean not a cloud sorry clock and I'm gonna show you one I've already made and we've I've decorated a little bit and so basically you just write them around and then um, what you do is you just take a pencil, like this one, anything, just make it a little sharpened, or if you have a straw or just any type of stick you want, and basically you're just going to find the center and poke a hole through it. Make sure to not poke yourself. And so then you have the gnomon with it. And so what you're going to do then is you can put it down on the ground and you find where true north is using a compass and then you can uh, you slant the gnomon towards true north wherever that is and then based off of where the sun is outside it should be able to based off the shadow it casts it should be able to tell you what time of day it is. So. If y'all decide to create some, definitely send them to us and pictures of it. We'd love to see it. And next week, we're going to be doing something on the water cycle. And I'm also going to include a link in a post of different websites you can go to to find out more information. So if you just want to learn more about different weather topics and just make sure to join us next week for our water cycle feature.